Welcome to the Hardcore Iron Man adventure. Before your regularly scheduled progress video, let's catch you all up to speed. Because between the end of the last video and the start of this one, I lost about 30 hours of footage. I was able to salvage a couple Twitch clips, so let's go through those first. First off, riding the high of completing Haraken and getting my Kiln Cape, I thought we should, you know, maybe push the limits just a tiny little bit. So I decided it might be time for the Queen Black Dragon. If you were following the last Hard Crying Man series, I managed to lose not one, but two lives at QBD. So I thought it'd be a really uh, fun way to get some revenge. And that is exactly what we did. So without super anti-fires, went to QBD and secured the kill. And the plan was to just get the one kill. Obviously, I'm not pushing my luck. I know it was kind of dangerous to do. And uh, yeah, we got our kill, we got our redemption, and we actually got a dragon kite shield from our first kill as well, which was pretty crazy. After my first successful QBD trip on a hardcore Iron Man ever, I think, uh, I decided to do some more questing and ended up completing what I would call one of the worst and most cursed terrible quests in the entire game. Bro, I'm getting out of here. I'm out. Did he just say I'm the no I'm notorious PIG? I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. After a bit of questing, I learned how to do Croesus 4s for the first time. We're a hard crier, man, so getting Crip Loom is going to be extremely important. So I thought learning 4s would be extremely beneficial. And from this point forward, we started to do Croesus 4s every single day. So it's kind of fortunate. You guys didn't really miss a whole lot. Except for one other thing. I made the decision to go for the World Wakes quest. The experience reward is extremely solid, and on top of that, I mean, it's Sunshine. Sunshine is a foundational ability that you pretty much need for, you know, the majority of endgame PVMing. So I thought, to vault myself into the endgame, I would do the World Wakes on a slightly low-level account. And generally speaking, this wasn't too, too risky to do. Uh, there's one aspect of the quest that's a little dangerous. It's the final end part where you kind of have to run past these lava balls. But in my head, I figured if I can handle the combat portion of the quest before that, it shouldn't be the end of the world. And I've seen many, many hardcores die here and lose a life here, but I have also seen a ton of accounts do it successfully. And I've even done it successfully in the past too. So I thought, you know what? Should be fine. We'll take some precautions and we'll get it done. The first thing I did here is I have a mix of Eligators and Guthix Arrests, and this is going to allow me to combo eat. It's going to allow me to gain HP really, really quickly. I knew exactly how much damage the fireballs hit, and with this current setup, it would allow me to basically out eat a fireball for the entire length of the entire run. So because of that, I figured, yeah, we're pretty safe here. On top of this, I also do have a sign of life, so, you know, we're even safer there. So to me in my head, I'm thinking, even if things go absolutely terribly wrong, I should be fine. I can heal the same amount of HP needed to just completely outheal this damage output for the entire duration. The objective is just to get to the other side. It's like a game of British Bulldog. You just need to run all the way down, and then as soon as you get there, quest is done, you get your reward, you're good to go. You'll notice that I'm sitting on 100% adrenaline here, and I am doing this so that if I run into an issue, uh, I can use the barricade ability. Barricade is awesome. It will stop me from taking damage. It won't last for very long with the shield that I have, but it's still going to be good enough to probably get me out of a tight spot. But there's a weird kind of quirk with combat, which is that if you are in combat um, in accordance to the game and you eat food, your adrenaline will drop. But if you are out of combat, which means your character just did its out of combat animation, you can eat food as much as you want and your adrenaline will never drain. So my mistake here is I was under the impression that I had already dropped combat and I didn't double check. And what that means here is the second I get hit here and I eat, my Adren is now 90% instead of 100. So now I can no longer use Barricade. But you're gonna notice something else. I'm immediately trying to teleport out and I had no idea that you couldn't. And actually at the time of this on the wiki page, it did not list that you couldn't teleport. And it has since been changed since this blunder but that is also entirely on me. This is something I should have known. But once again, we got backup plans on top of backup plans. So, you know, it shouldn't be the end of the world either way. But then it comes to the third and final mistake and the mistake that completely and utterly did me in. As you can see, I'm healing, you know, about 2,400 life points every time I get hit. 
which is awesome. That's a great amount of life points to heal when the hits are 1,900. But I'm not being hit for 1,900. And here is why. The third thing I did not know is that two fireballs, if you are super, super unlucky, can spawn directly on top of each other at the exact same time, and they can go along the track together. And you'll see in a second here that the two fireballs actually split and take different paths. And just like that, we are dead. Which is crazy. I cannot believe still to this point that two fireballs spawned directly on top of me at the exact same moment. Which, I mean, honestly, probably shouldn't happen. Should probably change that or fix that. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. But the fact of the matter is, I should have known that. And upon doing some, some digging and some research after the fact, it turns out that can only happen on the middle path. So if instead of taking the middle path, I had taken the northern path, I would have been okay. It entirely falls on me. I just, I greatly underestimated this thing. I saw all these other hardcores dying to this and I thought, it's not gonna happen to me. I had the food situation, I had the adren situation, and I thought I would be totally fine. And then the thing that ends up killing me here is when you activate a sign of life, you'll, you can see this, I'm getting right, right ahead of the boulder. I'm just ahead of it now. Um, but a sign of life, as we've experienced at the last hardcore, it roots you in place for one game tick. And because of that, it then runs me over again. And that is the first life completely and utterly gone. Immediately after this happened, I started thinking about if I wanted to restart the account and also restart the series. And honestly, there are pretty strong arguments both ways. If I restart, there's a way higher chance of me reaching my final goal, which is best in slot everything, all of the best gear in the game. Obviously doing that on a hardcore is already very difficult and losing a life early, yeah, that really, really sucks. And especially the way that we lost it, where every single possible thing that could have went wrong uh, went wrong in the perfect way to uh, to take away our first life. But at the same time, I still have my hardcore status. We are still a hardcore Iron Man. We have one more freebie extra life to burn. And then after that, we're in the permadeath stage. But I kind of felt like our story wasn't over yet. We'd just incurred a massive, massive setback and pretty early on as well. But on my last hardcore, we lost our first life much, much earlier than this. And even the second life was lost super, super early. So... I looked at it and I felt like if we did continue, there'd still be a pretty good chance of us getting all the way to the end zone. But at the end of the day, is it even really about the final goal? Or is the journey a lot more important? The adventures, the stories, what we've actually managed to accomplish on the account. And to me, the journey is a lot more important. But at the same time, I'm only 150 hours into the account. And because of that, I could technically restart, spend another month, get back to that same point, and just be at the same spot that I was before, make one better decision, and have an extra life for the entire rest of the series. But in the end, I couldn't come to a decision. So I decided I would let the fates take control and figure it out for me. So what I did is I re-geared and I went back to the cave that had just taken my first life. And I said, I'm gonna finish the World Wakes quest right now. If we get to the end zone without me dying, without anything bad happening, we continue the series. If I die to a fireball, well, it's no longer even a decision because I hadn't even bought the second extra life yet. This is one of the clips that was deleted with the rest of the VOD and I'm just working off Twitch clips and there isn't one for this moment. But we super cleanly, super easily ran all the way across, barely taking damage from anything at any point. The way that it normally works and the way that it normally should go if you're not extremely, extremely unlucky. And now, the story resumes with the World Awakes quest completed, one less life on the hardcore, the adventures of Tall and Manly continue. All right, give me a fortunate. Ooh, we actually take those, that's huge. I was gonna DA it, but obviously I don't have invention lock, but we're probably gonna get there soon. I mean, crafting is really easy to train, it's AFK. Divi, we're gonna be 80 like by the end of the week. Just the, the smithing is gonna be a bit iffy, but not bad at all, honestly. That is level 60 in the reward skill. Let's go. Can finally make weapon poison. Amazing. That we will be applying to our weapons and not drinking. Next thing we are gonna do is God Statues. Let's go. That is level 58 in the construction skill and 56 prayer as well.
actually not bad at all. 112 combat. And we continue. Hey, big guy. He's so sleepy. 22 KXP? Wait, that's seven levels. <laughs> and here we go. Wait, that's actually like quite good. Hairlander is good. No Marintils. That's a little unfortunate because Hairlander Marintil gets me Gethix Rest, but yeah, that's actually really solid. That is a horror from the Deep Quest Complete. It's always so underwhelming when the boss battle is 4,000 life points, but I will take two quest points. Dream Mentor? My Arm's Big Adventure. Dream Mentor is a big quest. What if I die during Dream Mentor? Defeat multiple high-level monsters in one trip without prayer. I'm assuming we'll be okay. Bro, this man's got no hit chance. There we go. Dream Mentor, quest complete. Get an automatic XP, HP, HP, extra lunar spells, two quest points. Yeah, that seems really good. And there we go. Quest complete. Two more quest points. Good chunk of XP. Crystal Seed. Good stuff. Okay. What is the quest after that? Oh, it's super long. And I don't have the Rex for it. I need 60 strength, 56 thieving. Okay. What lies below? What kind of quest is that? Short to medium. Okay, we might be doing what lies below. Okay, that is the what lies below. Quest complete. Wait, and a massive runecrafting XP lamp too. 8k XP? Don't mind if I do. Dude, look at all the progress. It's just ridiculous. It is just like, we're literally almost out of part one of this plan. Like we, we're working on the fishing right now. Couple of quests left. We're basically out of here, man. It's it's genuinely ridiculous. Um, We're also probably gonna do some Croesus Forest today to try and get a Crippling piece because you know, we're getting to the point where I am gonna start needing it. I can actually equip it pretty soon, so. That is something as well. I don't want to go to Krill just yet because I'd rather get slightly, slightly, slightly higher stats. That is level 60 fishing coming in. We absolutely take those. And we're finally getting some catfish for the first time, which, I mean, they're an actual food source that is good enough that we could actually use for PGMing. Um, Although I don't have the cooking level. Ooh, so, you know, we'll get there. Up? One thing at a time. So we are doing Jot, and this is kind of an exciting one. You guys may not be excited by this. I definitely am. That is level 65 agility which means we now have all levels need for I have had one, but also the Hetz Oasis agility course, which is absolutely huge as, you know, on a normal Iron Man, you just do the Willy course. I am not a normal Iron Man and I'm not trying to die. So now we've got access to a really, really good agility training method all the way up um, to the Prifrec and then even to Anacrania too. So basically the exciting part there is we are now from this point on for the entire rest of the series gonna be using jack of trades on herblore so our herbal level is level 60 and it is just going to fly from here on out that is level 61 herblore coming in 62 farming coming in which means we can farm snapdragons and we are i believe two levels away from being able to stop doing beehives which is pretty good nice little daily reduction and start farming spiders which uh yeah should be really really good very excited for that how many levels are in it here I think we're going to get a prayer level, no agility level, and should probably not be a slayer level either. Bang. Yeah, here we go. 57 prayer coming in. That's not, uh, that's not too bad. If you had a phobia of birds, this would not be a pleasant idea. Look how big he is. This is harder than like 80% of the game's quest bosses. Yeah, I actually can't hit him. I'm splashing. Oh, he's so walkable though. Oh my goodness. Wait, wait. Turn walk on. I love this game. That is My Arms Big Adventure quest complete. A quest point, bunch of herb XP, bunch of farm XP, and yeah, nice. Another uh, another farming patch too. Sweet. Um, I don't know what the next quest is going to be, but I am quite happy with that. 220 quest points, and I think the next quest we're going to do actually is going to be... Oh yeah, I don't have the strength or the thieving levels for this guy. Um... Actually, I'm really close. I'm 7 kill 56 thieving, and 60 strength will take no time in ED3. So maybe we could do that. 
That is level 56 thieving. So now all we need is 60 strength, and then we are good to do the path of glue free. He's going over left. Run! Run! He just took a life! That is insane. You're also insane. Level 54 attack. Let's go. Okay. Um. That was not good. That is 55 attack. That right there is level 60 attack. Which means we've got our dragon halberd, which we're probably going to splash just as much with. Wait, I'm actually hitting like a truck right now. Are y'all seeing this? That is 54 strength coming in. Let's freaking go, dude. 54 done. Can I spec? Oh my god! Wait, the spec is so good! And that's 55, like eight seconds later. Okay, that's actually fire. What a fire fit. All right, run it back. That right there is level 60 in the strength skill. Now of all the levels you need for the quest that we're trying to get to. Also gives me access to God Wars if I want to go the strength way, but we already have the agility way unlocked. That is the path of gloof, glue free, glue. The path quest complete. Easy level 61 strength. We could have just done eight seconds of ED3 for that, but you know, fair enough. Good enough for me. Uh, Yeah, we take those. All right, what's the next quest on our progression here? So we've done that, we've done that. Next, we've got Hunt for the Sorak, Hand of Sand, Creature Frankenstein, Garden of Tranquility, which is a terrible quest. Tell them we spent Missing a Mummy, A Tale of Two Cats, and The Great Brain Robbery. And Oryx Rift after that. Look at this overlay! A piece of history. Wait, he's got some life points, dude! Does he have any mechanics? I hope not. The sound when he bonks me, dude. This is like more meaningful than many actual boss fights in this game. That was fun. That was like a quest boss that actually felt like real. And there we go. Hunt for the Sorak. Quest complete. We are now level 65 Slayer as well, which is honestly really, really cool. That's a nice level to get. Alrighty, that is the Hand of the Sand quest complete. 9,000 crafting XP is actually kind of nuts. That is 62 crafting coming in. And much more importantly, with 225 quest points, we can get our first hard clue reward from May, which means we could actually get a die from this. I mean, I don't think it's ever going to happen. I've never had a die on any RuneScape account ever, but uh, we are going to grab this thing. Yeah, tier three. Here we go. Let's roll it. Yay! That's actually nuts. A million coins and a four chick component. No die this time, but I am so happy with the money. We take those. And on to the next quest. When is Wilgothic well Sleeps? I don't know. Hopefully soon. I don't think it has that crazy Rex, actually. I'm sure we've got most of the quests. Like, we'll be doing Wilgothic well Sleeps, and we'll have Curses, and Extinction, and City Sinison at some point. That is Creature of Thank and Strain. Quest complete. Ring of Karos, not hugely important. Bit of Thieving XP, also not hugely important, but we will absolutely take two quest points. And the next quest on our progression path is Garden of Tranquility, which is a massive time lock. So we're going to start this quest and then do some other quests and then we'll figure it out. Wait, do I have to push this all the way? No way. Wait, no way. Okay, we're good. I was going to say, there's no shot. I have to push it all the way. Okay, we're fine. First kill of the day, a little scuffed, but good enough. Oh! Oh my goodness! Elisa with the crippling top! Ooh, let's go! That is level 60 in the construction skill. That's actually quite good. This is the loot from one hour of four-person Crisis. Ha! Hello? This is just, it's just so balanced. It's just so balanced and fair. Alrighty, what do you got for Crisis? Final kill of the Reaper assignment. Probably a Slayer level. We get one of those almost every day. And... No Slayer level, unfortunately. 37 Reaper points, we have a total of 275. But uh, yeah, that was another really, really good, you know, situation. Doing some fours. We're gonna have to do more in the future because I want my first unique. I've decided. 
Dude, how tall a manly do you have to be to make a boat in six swings of your axe? That's pretty nuts. Now that is Tale of the Bispa quest complete. 228 quest points. So now we can take our ectophile and see if we can actually do Garden of Tranquility. I am actually praying. Okay, they're on their last stage. That's okay. All fired up. A short quest. Okay, that is... All fired up. Quest complete. The easiest quest point in the West. We take those. And now we're going to finish off Garden of Tranquility for real this time. Because this has been a two-hour endeavor thus far. Which is kind of crazy, actually. All, all things considered. Why do I normally Dark Glacier to save death? Um, because it's designed to be... A boss, it's designed to help you learn PVM. It's a teaching boss. And it's quite funny. The boss to help teach you learn PVM, they've realized that death costs are uh, a massive detriment to learning. That is the Imp Catcher quest complete. What a hype quest. I mean, actually, it was short. That's good, at least. And now, for the 20th time today... Please, can we finish the Garden of Tranquility quest? Please let my orchids be grown. I beg. They're not done grow- <laughs> No way. Alright. Chat, I'm gonna grab some water. I'll be right back. And by the time I come back, they had better be grown. Okay, what? They have to be grown, right? They have to be. It's like one should learn a little patience. Yeah, well... Alright, fine. Oh, wait. Wait, did they just grow? I think they just grew. I think they just grew. Oh, they did! In front of my very eyes! Alright, we're good. Gaming. Get me the heck out of here. Why did that take so long? And... There we go! Guard of Tranquility quest complete. That was... That was truly awful. That was, like, actually really, really, really awful. But it's done. And so long as I don't die to fire again, we won't ever have to do it again. So that's pretty... Pretty aight, I suppose. Five Guam Seeds for my efforts. How exciting. All right, well, thank you, Elamaria, for that great experience that took two hours. Um, I hope to never see you ever again.